from a secret location in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. I think that you just don't really make our world a better place. And now, and now here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Wide open telephones on this Friday. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week, anything you think we should have talked about. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game, long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, Dean J. DeVilio, man with a criminal record, the history of wielding a Louisville slugger. By the way, no steroids. I mean, he's popped and snorted and shot a lot of other things, but steroids, never. And he still swings the big bat, so uh, don't even try to call in here unless you're absolutely fascinating. But if you are, I call this telephone number, 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Let us say hello here to, look at all these calls here. Let's say hello here to Michael on the Tom Likas Show. How you doing, Tom? How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing all right. All right, uh, check it out. It was about four years ago that I was uh, I was going out with this stupid bitch, uh, <laughs> and I was I was with her for quite a while. She was a high school sweetheart. Actually, I met her through uh, since junior high, and I was so pussified. I was with her throughout the whole high school, and it was about senior year that I just I I didn't see anything that I liked in her anymore. And stupid me, I knocked her up. <laughs> Can you believe that, Tom? That's stupid. Stupid, yep. All right. And as soon as I knocked her up, I let her move into my house. Actually, it was at my mom's house at the time. <laughs> yep. Uh, and then I'm a little nervous here. All right. And as soon as that happened, she just started. She didn't want to take care of the kid. She wanted me to come home after work, and she wanted uh, me to... You know, wash wash the baby's bottles, change his diaper, and give him a shower. And um, as soon as that happened, I just I just couldn't take it anymore. And what what ha- ended up happening is I just gave her the boot. I kicked her out. I told her, hey, you know what? I'm sorry. I can't deal with this anymore. You know, I'll go ahead and take care of the kid, but you just got to go back to your mom's house. And uh, she didn't like the fact that I that I told her that. And so she told me that I wasn't going to see my child anymore. And um, that that I was just a, a stupid man, you know, the regular typical guy, just trying to get away from from the responsibilities. And I didn't really have anything to say to that, but she told me that she wasn't gonna let me see my child anymore. And um, and I don't know, I didn't know how to deal with that. And then a couple. Do you know like what a month- period is, by the way? Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. All right, a couple. Um, Slow it down for you, Tom. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> All right. After after she uh, she she sent me the child support papers, and I just I didn't know how to deal with that, so I just went down to the um, child support office, and I tried to fix that, and I I tried to um, extend the process. I didn't really want to give the payment right away. I just you know, a month, a month of not Why didn't you get a DNA test, son? I'm sorry, what? Why didn't you get a DNA test? <laughs> All right, and as soon as the... Uh, hey, wait, you didn't answer my question. Oh, I, I did get I did DNA test. You got a DNA test and you know it's yours. Uh, I thought it was mine, but it turned out to be that it's not my son. Well, where did you have the DNA test taken? 
It was at a uh, at a clinic of in Santa Ana, and uh, they did the whole cotton swab through my mouth. And then they had, they called her in like a couple of days later and had DNA done to the child, and it turned out to be that it, that it wasn't my child. And um, so what happened then? All right. Um. After that, I, w- I went to court. It was uh, November 28th of the year 2006. That was uh, about almost two years ago. And um, No, that was a year ago. A year ago. I'm sorry. And um, as soon as that happened, the, the kid the kid was going to be two on December 4th of the year 2006. And th- there was a law that passed in California that if you were... The- uh, if you were the father figure for the son for like two years, that, that you're automatically the father. And well, I got I got saved by a whole week of not paying child support, even though I wasn't the fa- the father. And now, um, back back to the birth when um. How did she the- react when she found out you were not the father? Oh, she started crying, and she was apologizing to me, and she's just trying to keep everything cool, but. I told her, you know what, everything's done with. You did what you got to do, and I did what I got to do, and now we're through. <laughs> and I haven't talked to her since. And um, about two two weeks ago, it was last Sunday, no, two two weeks ago on a Sunday, she came to my house giving me a letter saying that um, that, that um, if, if I could go down to the office, the child support office, and it was just a, a room a room across where the office I was at, the courtroom, uh, if I could go ahead and sign a paper saying that I'm not the father and because um, she wants to change the, the kid's name. Um, the, the kid's name, uh, <laughs> she, she named him after me. She named him after me, So, and now she wants me to go ahead and do that, and I was going to ask you, uh, well, should I go ahead and do Don't that? Don't do or, anything or? without an attorney. Don't do anything without an attorney. Listen carefully. Don't do anything without an attorney. All right. All right, that's perfect. Um, also, well, the, the whole child support, I, I already went to court, and the judge told me that I'm not the father, and I, I don't have to pay her anything. But and I don't, I don't mean, know. I don't I'm not a that. lawyer, and I don't know what the implications are of signing a piece yeah. of paper like that, and neither do you. All right. All right. Well, I was, willing, I, I was, I was just going to go ahead and... Um, and ask her just you know put put a put a price on my signature and you you want my signature you want to don't do name? any you hear me don't do yeah. anything without an attorney all right I don't even know if that's legal <laughs> if <laughs> putting a price on that right yeah all right so well, do it with an attorney okay so well i'm not I'm not obligated to do anything she just wants me to go ahead and do that. And there's no there's no third party like like a courtroom or tell her she'll have to pay. Of... All right, then hear what you, you if I were you, I'd tell her she has to pay your attorney for a consultation. <laughs> she ain't gonna do that. Fine. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. I was yeah. All right, that's perfect. That's awesome. Cause uh, <laughs> I was planning on just go, going and uh, telling her just go ahead. You, you can do whatever you want to do, and um. And I'll just do mine. But, hey, uh, Tom, I got to get back to work. Can you take me out the bong hit and thank you, Jesus? I certainly can. Thank you, Jesus. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Ted on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Good afternoon. Uh, one of your callers called in about growing... Uh, wine grapes with seeds and uh, i know you're a big wine lover and i wanted to explain to you that uh, oh i'm well aware that you need rootstock i'm well uh, aware that uh, that you need to know what it is you're growing what the varietal is varietals and clones and all that stuff correct yeah. i i know uh, yeah, I'm, from, I'm from napa i used to grow grapes up in napa and sonoma and so you know the deal yeah i i, I you know i went to college and all that so I know all about that stuff. So. Yeah, well, I'm not an expert in it, and I, I I plan to bring somebody in to help me out with that. Oh, I think that's a good idea. Once we get started, um, but you know, first yeah. thing to do is like take possession of the property, which won't happen until February. Yeah, you want to uh, 
find some local vineyard management companies that uh, you might want to check around, you know, and uh, find a good one, and they can come in and help you develop it. Yeah, that would be my goal. Yeah, all right. You have a good afternoon. Ted, thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is, is this Hike? Hey, Tom. Uh, how you doing? I'm okay, Hike. Hey, Tom, um, I have a quick question for you. Um, I've been listening to you for over about a year now, and um, every single time during the intro to your show, you would you, you'd say your intro, but I noticed you pause out of nowhere on specific parts, you know, um, and I'm not too sure why. Is there a reason? Pausing is part of doing radio because of the way people use radio. Radio is what's called a secondary medium. A primary medium would be something like a movie, where you go into a darkened theater, you sit in a chair, and you stare ahead, and the movie is what you are there to do. Radio is something you do while you're doing something else. So people are very rarely paying full attention to everything you're saying on the radio. Pausing is part of a technique uh, that makes sure that your message will be heard, and it is used by other radio personalities, the most well-known of which is named Paul Harvey a news commentator who's been on the air probably for 60 years. But wouldn't it make more sense to put in like a filler word instead of just a pause? Nope. <laughs> it doesn't. Imagine how most people listen to the radio. They're in the car. Somebody else is sitting in the passenger seat. They're having a conversation. They're not paying attention. Pausing gets people to pay attention. Just like... You're doing right now? <laughs> yes. Oh. So that's how it works. Makes sense. Thanks a lot, Tom. Can I get taken out? Uh... Also, it's fascinating how people like you feel the need to fill the vacuum. It's an amazing study in human nature. I see. Thank you for the information, Tom. Uh, it's very clear to me now. Can I get taken out tribal style? You sure you're finished? Yes, I am, Tom. Tribal style? Please. Baninge, 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 Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM, 1-800-5800-866. Does your question have anything to do with what I'm discussing on the air this hour? No. That means that's the end of the call. Uh, my question You bitch. Is... The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Wide open telephones on this Friday. 1-800-5800-866. That's the telephone number to dial. It's Jason on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Hey. I'm doing okay. Good. Hey, I have a, a weird situation, and maybe I think you can get your advice on. Um... I'm 34. I have a girlfriend that's 21, and uh, really cool. I mean, things have been going great. I, I've dated her since November 1st, but the the problem is I only see her once a week, which is not a big deal to me. But I've had sex with her in three weeks, and the the big problem is she doesn't like sex. She thinks it's dirty. Well, then you got the wrong girlfriend, and I don't understand uh, what what possible other questions there could be to ask. <laughs> well, because let me tell you that. The reason why, she, men mentally, she was screwed up because she was uh, raped when she was 15 by her stepdad. And, uh, and again, and you're just confirming what I'm telling you. Baggage, mental issues. Uh, this is not the kind of person you need in your life. You don't think that somebody that, because I, I heard somebody tells me, well, you should be patient and wait because it might come, you know, turn around. And Sometimes it doesn't turn around. And what happens if you wait until you're 40 years old and you're stuck with somebody who still doesn't like sex, doesn't want to have sex with you? 
Yeah, that's true. You know, your life is precious. Do I treat it that way? Yeah, because I need to have it at least four times a week. And well, man, pal, then, you know. then she's not right for you anyway. You don't think so, huh? If you need it four times a week and you're not getting it four times a week, it doesn't matter what the reason is. See, because I, I didn't want to break a dumper because it make me feel selfish. What's wrong with being selfish? Well, I mean, you know. You're not a so, you are not a social worker. Well, I know that, but most of my relationships have been based on sex, and it clouds people's thinking. Where I, I wanted something more real, and more realistic, but at the same time, sex is still one of the most important issues, and, and in most cases, it's in the top two. Yeah, she she also doesn't. Well, she doesn't think there's a difference between making love and sex. I don't so, know. I I uh, frankly, I don't know what difference you're talking about. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, it's different. Making love is what people who hate sex call sex. Uh, well, she doesn't hate sex. She tells me she doesn't people hate People who it. hate... Well, why isn't she having it with you? I know. She, she just doesn't. People who hate <laughs> sex call it making love. Yeah, but she, she doesn't get emotion. You know, some girls have sex and they, their feelings get involved, their emotions get involved. She doesn't. She says her sex is just sex when, when she wants to have it. Well, her terms. well, she clearly is damaged by her experience. And have you ever heard from experience that, you know, women find the right guy and, and, and they get over it? No yeah. guy ever cured anything. <laughs> Issues like these, if they can be solved, are solved by years of therapy. Not by yeah. meeting the right guy. You're being very simplistic about this. And of course, very egotistical. You know, you're just the kind of guy. You know, you you've got just the right moves in bed. Yeah, you you'll, you'll get a cure of this problem. Are you kidding me? I'm not trying to cure the problem. I get your head out of your ass, pal. You're not that good in bed. Hey, well, it's not about that. That's I think what it's, it's about. about being, she calls my name. Which we do have sex. She calls my name out. I mean, I'm, that's what confuses the hell out of me. But she never has sex with you anymore. I, that's what doesn't make sense. When she does have sex with me, though, she's like, you know, have, tell me how great it feels and calls my name well, out. Well, maybe she's know. faking. You don't know. She could be. But she could be. I mean, she she told you she doesn't want to have sex. And she said that might change. That might not. She doesn't know. But some people told me to be patient and just wait. Well, and they're crazy. Of... You know what I'm saying? Well, here's what I would say to somebody like that. Keep working on your problems. And when they are resolved, call me for sure. Mm hmm She told me she needed therapy. Great. Right. And is she in therapy? No, I don't think she's yeah, ever well, what does that therapy. what does that tell you? I don't know. This I'm is like, somebody who doesn't want to deal with the issue. Yeah, By the way, I've been in therapy. It can be very scary. And I can understand somebody not wanting to do it. Because yeah. it can be very painful. But if she's not doing it, th there's a very important message in that that you're refusing to get. Yeah, because I, I think the main issue is, like, when, when I'm around her, everything's awesome. I mean, but when I'm not really? around Like, her, when you're around her and she's refusing to have sex with you, is that awesome? No, 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 no. When I'm like, so when the, I'm last three, together, the last you know, three weeks you've been with her and she said no. How awesome was that? I've had okay. I've had I've had sex with her four times since November first, and I can count every again. Single how thing. awesome was you? Not you're avoiding my question here. How awesome was that when you were with her and she refused to have sex with you? Would you call that awesome? No, like we've been out. Like say we go out. I don't. You know. Was it not, awesome? It's, it's no, but it's not. It's not that important to me. It is important. Yes, it is important to you. Well, I guess it is. That's why I'm calling you. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I think, pal, I I you, you're calling here, you're calling here pretending to ask for advice. When I give you advice, you start arguing with me. No, I'm not arguing with you. I'm just trying to figure Get out. out. What like. Get out. Get out. Regardless of thinking if I should, if it should change. You're not, not a third. If it, tell her when it changes to give you a call. Yeah. Yeah, because it, I'm going nuts out of my mind. When I'm not with her, thinking about it, you know, and I and I bring it up to her, and she, and she gets. So tell her, I good luck in therapy. If you want to talk from time to time, give me a call. And 
once you get this issue resolved, by all means, let me know. Yeah, that's true. Because I, I, I think my biggest thing is I was just trying to hope that, oh, maybe it'll change. Maybe it'll get better, you know? Again, you're not going to cure it. Only she can. Only she and a professional can. Yeah. We're talking, by the way, all kidding aside, we're talking about rape here. Yeah. That is pretty goddamn serious. I personally, there have been people in my own family, first cousin, uh-huh. and others who've been raped. I think it's worse than being killed. Yeah, because it lives with you for the rest of your life. Right. You know, so that's pretty heavy stuff. I I I, I took that into consideration. I guess. You know, but you're not. You're here acting like you're going to cure it. Well, I was just trying to be thinking. I'm okay. I'm going to be patient. I'm going to be that different guy. She's that... not doing anything about it. Wake no. up! You're going to be patient for what? Patient is hopefully she'll. Turn She's around. not working on it. She's not in therapy. Do you think she's not because she? she wants I don't to care reason. what the reason is. She's not working on it, so therefore it isn't going to get better. Now, my patient is running slim with you right now. Are you hearing me or not? I'm hearing you. Then then act accordingly. She's not working on this problem, and therefore it isn't going to get any better. Well, how do I tell her with, with showing her? I respect? told I you what to, to say. You're not listening. I'm going to say this for the last time, and if you ask me to repeat it, I'm hanging up the phone. I have already said when you were not paying attention during this conversation, tell her that you know what a problem it is, you wish her all the luck in the world, that she gets all the help she needs, and she should definitely call you when she has resolved these issues. Yeah. That's what you say. That's the only thing to say, really. You are not a therapist. It is not your responsibility to hang around and try to help her fix this or to be patient. Be patient is something you say about somebody when they are getting help. Yeah, yeah that, you're right. Do you think I should tell her to go get help? Or it's not your too, problem. Not my problem, yeah. Stop butting in where you don't belong. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Well, hey, I appreciate the uh, the input on that. I don't think you're going to follow my instruction. Well, I'm going to do what I can. I'm going to. I'm, you I'm can't have a talk with do her. anything. Well, the way I look at it, since I've only been with her a little over a month, I <sighs> I told myself I'd give it three months. Wait, you've been with her a little? Wait, 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 wait. You've been with her a little over a month, and the last three weeks she hasn't had sex with you. That's right. That means you had sex with her for a week. Basically, like four times. I, I can't take this anymore. <laughs> I know I am paid an obscene amount of money to do this job. It still isn't enough. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Pedro on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Pedro. How you doing? Doing great. I do care. Doing great. Um, I'm a big time fan. I'm a big fan of yours. I'm, I'm a little nervous, so just bear with me. Mm -hmm. I have a question for you, though. Um, my question is that I got into a car accident a couple months ago, and I got, I believe it's whiplash. The technical term was like neck strain, you know. And um, I so I've been out of work for about a couple months. I was going to school. I had to drop out of school. But now I'm running out of cash, and I didn't have medical insurance at the time I got. Why, why didn't you have medical insurance? I just slipped my mind. I quit my job at the time uh, two months Whose earlier. Whose fault was this accident? Huh? Whose fault was this accident? Uh, I was mine. It's your fault. Yeah. Mm. All right. And um, I had some money saved up from working, so I could, you know, have it for me when going to school, so I could concentrate on school. But um, now I'm running thin, and my doctor still hasn't cleared me to go to um, go back to work. 
the pain's still here or whatever, but my question is, do you have any advice for how I could, you know, what I should do in this case? I'm not really getting any support from my family because they're just saying, well, that's what you get for going to school. That's tough. So uh, your family is Mexican, I take it? Um, mixed, actually. Mexican and black. Why would they say that's what you get for going to school? Well, none of them really have gone to school except for one member, but they all have amassed like pretty good wealth on their own without uh, going to school. So they tell me I don't need it. Yeah, well, that's just plain ignorant. Hey, tell me about it. Now, what school are you going to? A community college? Where are you going to school? Yeah, um, actually right now I'm going to trade school to help me find part-time work so that I could pay for a university. No, but what university were you going to? Oh, um, I'm transferring. I haven't decided yet, but I think I'm going to UCLA. Were you, were you going to a college before? Trade school is not college. Were you going no. to a college? Yeah, I was going to a community college. I have like a semester left to transfer. And you dropped out? Um, yeah, just to uh, pick up this trade, because I asked a friend of mine who went, to, uh, who went to Berkeley, he said if he could do it again, he'd have a trade to work part-time while he was going to school full-time. So I was just doing this to help pay for his school, because I, I don't have any parents. You don't have any parents? Well, they died. All right, well, mine did too. Yeah. So, you know, that's... That was my Well, plan, your anyway. priority, your priority has to be uh, getting your health together. And I think you just have to stop down uh, school until you can put some money away. Right, right. And your plan has to be to put enough money away so that ultimately you can go back to school. Mm-hmm. So uh, right now, because like I said, my money's going, you know, it's going away. Luckily, I have a really cheap rent. Um... Do you have any advice for what I could do? I guess. Do you have a roommate? Do. Yeah, I do. All right. You have to cut your expenses to the bone. I am, man. I'm getting out of my gym membership because uh, you know I can't go to I can't go to the gym, and I can I'm eligible for about like a hundred fifty dollar refund or so, and just cutting any expenses I can. Well, you're doing uh, then, I guess, everything you can. I, all I can say is you need to keep your expenses low. Um, you need to, um, to try to put away whatever money you can. You need to make money any way you can, preferably at a at some kind of a gig where you wouldn't stress yourself out. Maybe there's some work you can do at home. Maybe there is some uh, work that is not necessarily physical uh, that you could do, um, you know, in an office at a desk somewhere. But you're just going to have to stop down the the school thing until. Uh, until you're physically able to, to work and pay for everything. I, I feel your pain. I had to drop out of college because I got no help from home. And um, I personally recommend college to everybody, um, even though I was not able to finish. I got no help, and I know how it is. Anyway, best of luck, Pedro. Thank you so much for the call. Hey, Tom, happy holidays. This is uh, your former intern, Covey. Hey, you know what? Instead of, uh, I listened to your advice last year, uh, you know, Christmas time, we're spending it up on your balcony drinking with a bunch, all the guys. This year, since I got married, I waited till I was 27, like you said, but instead of being up at your house, I'm putting Christmas tree lights out, a star on the tree, and by the way, the purse underneath the Christmas tree has my balls in it. I'm f Happy holidays. It's the Tom Likas Show. Sound like a show at one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Thank you so much for tuning in on this Friday with wide open telephones at one 800 800 Let's say hello here to Stephanie on the Tom Like a Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Doing great, Stephanie. Oh, good. Glad to hear it. Um, I had a question for you. Um, yes, yesterday dear. you had a woman on the show. She was trying to sort of get around to asking you what a woman would get out of sleeping with you if you're not going to give them a relationship or money. Right. So I'm just curious. Say I'm a woman that's interested in having sex with you. What yes. am I getting out of it? 
Well, sex, for one thing. Right, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, I can get that from anyone, though. That's right. By, and, uh, by the way, you can also get money from anyone. So you're True. getting sex with me. Okay. Okay. Uh, understand Why is also. That better than sex with anybody else? Well, because I have money, power, and fame. But that doesn't do me any good because I don't get any money, power. Many fame. women, by, by the way, many women love sleeping with even the lowest level celebrities. You would be amazed. So, like, our ever. Yes. That's one. Uh, another thing is that it's, 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 it's the most perfect crime because <laughs> it's built on this premise. Delusional, of course. Uh, women believe that no matter what we are like as men, that they can change us. Right. You may not be one of those women, but most women are like that. Okay. So when a woman meets me, she will be in denial and she will say things to me like, I know you're not the guy on the radio. <laughs> you are really a nice, you know what? You're a teddy bear. You're a nice guy. That you know, is delusional. All right, but here's the thing. that That's how most women are. So here's what happens. Um, as a loss leader, just like Ralph's will have, you know, Coke on sale for Christmas at six cans for 99 cents or whatever it is, uh, women will offer up sex, hoping that down the line they're going to get under the hood and start making changes. So I will gladly accept the sex, and then when they get under the hood, they find out that uh, everything's locked and they can't change anything. But that still benefits me. Not. That's my point, though. They don't, see, dear, they don't, they're delusional. You're forgetting. They don't see the future. The way women see the future is, I'm going to move into his house, and I'm going to paint the room this way, and I'm going to put this furniture in, and then he's going to stop seeing those friends I don't like, and there's going to be no pot smoked here once I get in. That's how they think, baby. That's so how they think. So you're operating under the premise of you are completely insecure and hoping to change me and you will get nothing and I will get sex from you. That's Yes, that's, and it okay. has been working like a charm. <laughs> I don't doubt it. There's plenty of insecure women out here. But here's the thing, and so they get really indignant when they find out I'm not going to give them what they want right. because they've been giving me sex. And so well, that, I have had women I have had women say that's it enough of you. Get lost, goodbye. But meantime I already got what I wanted. Can I ask I have another question for you? Have you ever... Before um, we get to the next question, isn't that like genius? Think about it. No, it's, it's absolutely genius. And if I were a man and I didn't have to manipulate people into having sex with me, that's what I would do. And that's... It, it's perfect because every woman I meet, save a few exceptions, maybe like yourself, every woman I meet says the same thing. I've heard your show, but I know you're not like that. I know you're not like that. I know you take <laughs> girls to dinner once in a while. I know you're not mean. You're not an a-hole. I know. And I just let them believe that. So meanwhile, they never get more than $40. Here's the beauty part. Money. Later on, when, they, when I don't spend any money on them and I don't give them what I want, and they get indignant, I say, well, you knew what kind of person I was when you met me. So yeah. they really have no argument for that. No, it would be so... It's not like I pretended guy. to be a nice guy. Right. I never pretend to be a nice guy. Well, I think that's very admirable of you, actually. I mean, I just let... Okay, you know. <laughs> if you want to believe that. Yeah. So they give themselves up to me, and later on they find out the horrific truth. That I'm <laughs> telling the truth. <laughs> that I'm honest about who I am and what I am and how I am. And that they miscalculated. Right. Then, here's here's the best part of this crime, which I think is, this is the most ingenious part of it. Mm -hmm. The way they punish me is they stop seeing me. <laughs> That's what I wanted. You admit that it's a crime, though. Well, it's, it's a crime that's, it, certainly it's not in the books. Right. But, but, it, but like, it's like robbing a bank and getting away with it. I mean... The fact is, not only have, have, have I been honest with you about who I am and what I am and how I am, right. you give it up to me. Even though I'm not here with you on a false premise, you volunteered to give it up to me. Absolutely. And then later on, after you were miscalculating, after it's obvious you misjudged me, then I say to you, hey, I was honest with you. And they say, well, that's it. I'm done seeing you. But that was my point. I wanted them to be done seeing me so I could move on to the next victim.
No, it's perfect. I agree with you. Is it not a little bit of revenge for you against somebody who may have hurt you in the past? I'm sure you get Darling, that. every man out there has been hurt in the past. It's not just me. It's every man out there. Every man it's out there has had his heart carved out uh, by some woman who thought she was all that when we were 19 or 20 or 21, whatever. We all had women like that. And what's great is I have figured out my way of of uh, uh, evening the score. So you are evening the score. By the way, here's another way I even the score. Every year or every five years, whatever it is, when my high school has high school reunion, oh, they want me to come back. Oh, because I'm like the biggest good. celebrity in high school. Are you kidding me? <laughs> they want me to come back. Mm, but I don't, so you know what? I as as I've told people from my class, <laughs> these are the, all the women who wouldn't talk to me in high school. Guess what? Now I can afford their daughters. You are the Lex Luthor of radio. You really are. Why would I want to be with them? <laughs> and now that they're all 50 years old, now I want to plunge into that? Forget it. <laughs> what's your daughter's phone number? And for those of you who are the real trailer trashers, what's your granddaughter's phone number? Oh, my gosh. Do you know who Tucker Max is? No. Have you read a book called, um, or have you heard of a book called, I Hope They Serve Beer in Hell? <laughs> no, sounds like something right up my alley. I can't believe you haven't heard of it. It's a, it's a younger man. He's probably in his 30s. He's, you know, average looking, and he's very honest about who he is and the fact that he's a total a-hole. And um, he just uses women um, and gets drunk, and it's all about his true story, drunken episodes. I think you'd like it. Sounds good. But isn't it, is, is, this is the amazing thing. You know, guys were 18, 19, 20, 17, whatever. They're all trying to figure out how to get chicks into bed. Mm -hmm. And the best way to get chicks into bed is to act like a total jerk. And then they, they come to you and they go, oh, come on, you can't really be like that. Come on. <laughs> You're probably a teddy bear. And then, then you go ahead and be an a-hole. And then they, ah, well, I never. <laughs> they, they act all the things like, hey, I told you I was an a-hole. And I am an a-hole. Well, that's it. I don't want to see you anymore. Great. They go away. Well, there you go. And I'm knocking them off left and right. On average, how many women do you sleep with a week? Oh, I, I, I can't say an average in a week because there might be uh, hell. It, there was one You're time. I, I, can I tell you a story? I'm, <laughs> have you ever been to Staples Center? Yes. Sometimes the L.A. Kings hockey team will play a 1 o'clock game, mm -hmm. and then the game ends about 4, and then they have to kick everybody out so they can uh, you know, cover up the ice and then put in the floor for the Clipper game at 7.30. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I've pretty much had that at my house. <laughs> when I had the day game, and followed by the night game. And and the guys here know it because they they've they've seen the stripper pole in my bathroom. They know. Is this real stripper pole that's in your bathroom? Yes. Gary, would you please uh, confirm this uh, just just so they don't think I'm making this stuff up? Yes, I've seen it. I haven't da <laughs> I haven't danced on it, but I've seen it. I was going to say. I I have a stripper pole in my bathroom. Why in the bathroom? Why not in the bedroom? My well, here's why. First of all, my bathroom is as big as any bedroom. It's huge. Mm -hmm. And I have got the largest indoor jacuzzi available. Oh my gosh. After this, they become outdoor hot tubs. And uh, it's in the strip. Uh, the stripper pole is in a position where I can sit back, <laughs> turn on the jacuzzi, and be entertained while I sit there in the tub. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and, and here's what's great about it. You know what? It's great when a chick gets up on the pole. That's fine. But it works a lot better with the ones who don't. I don't understand. Because I've had women come into my bathroom and they say, what is this? Like they don't know. Right. <laughs> and I say, oh, it's a stripper pole. And they go, a stripper pole? Do women actually get up on this thing? And I say, hey, you don't have to get up on it. It's only there for people who want to. <laughs> what do you think that does to their self-esteem? <laughs> I don't know, lowers it. They hop right into my sack, baby. <laughs> the Tom Likas Show.